Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? It's OJ. We have some balance changes coming up. We have some league season changes as well. Let's check out the league seasons. It's already a news raw if you haven't seen it. So this kind of clarifies everything. When you reset, you will reset 50% of your trophies above 4,000. If you're at 5,000, then that difference of 1,000, 50%. You're going to go down from 5,000 to 4,500. If you're under 4,000, you are not affected. So they said originally it was going to be 75%, but they thought it would be best to keep it at 50%. All of your rewards after the season resets will be available. So once the season resets, you just have to click them manually to collect them all. I don't think it's going to stack after two seasons, so try to collect them. So once the season resets, then you can manually collect each reward. If you didn't collect the rewards after the next next season, it will automatically collect the rewards. So don't worry about it. If you're lazy, you don't, you don't even have to touch anything. The biggest thing is that Clash with Ash made a really good point. How some of the rewards didn't quite make sense at like the 5,000, 6,000 range. I mean, if you're at like 6,000, then... I don't think a common token is going to really benefit you. So what they've done is they've changed the rewards for 5,800 from one common token. You're now going to get 10 epic cards. 5,150 instead of a legendary token. If you're already maxed out in legendaries, you get 50 rare cards. That's huge for someone like me. And then as you can see with all the other ones, 4,900 instead of a lightning chest, you get an epic chest. That's an upgrade. 4,800 epic token to legendary token. 4,450 one rare token, you get five epic cards. Not trading one to one for a rare five epic cards. That is amazing. 4,150 instead of a common token, you can get one epic token because epics are harder to level up. It's juicy. But now let's talk about the balance changes. There are six different cards and it's going to be very juicy. So let's talk about the three legendary musketeers. They're reverting back to the nine elixir and maintaining their damage buff from the previous patch. But their deploy time has now increased from one second to three seconds. Think of a golem lingering in the back for a little bit, just chilling out behind the king tower. Another change is that they're staggering the deploy time in between each musket by 0.15 seconds. The staggered deploy time in between each musketeer is consistent with minion horde and goblin gang spawning. This kind of a buff where it's kind of also a nerf where you can build a bigger push with a 3 second deploy, but makes them easier to tornado to one side or connect your fireball and poison a lot easier. With the addition of the Earthquake, three musketeer pumps will be easier to deal with because now you can use the Fireball for the 3M, you can use your Earthquake for the pump. We've been waiting months for these balance changes to ensure the three musketeers don't dominate the meta again. With the Barbarian Health nerf, Battle Ram is no longer a 3M Lightning Rod. Another change that impacts 3M is that they added one extra Barbarian and they all die to Fireball now. Are Barbarians viable as 3M bait and split lane pressure now? The wall breakers haven't been connecting as much as they should be, so they are getting a half tile range buff on their attack. They'll connect to the tower a smidge faster. They also have splash damage to nearby units, so this increase in explosion radius means that they might splash onto even more nearby units hugging the tower more often now. Goblin Barrel is getting a slight buff to their deploy time from 1.2 seconds to 1.1 second. They're going to pop out of the barrel slightly faster. This won't get them more stabs though. It's very subtle difference. Total damage done to the tower is going to be the same, but there are very small changes that you might see. For example, if you log slightly too late, you will be punished with three extra stabs, but that's rare. The princess is getting a buff to her projectile speed, not her attack speed. This was intended so she doesn't miss those speedy spears or even the goblin gang running forward. Although her projectile speed is faster, this does not mean that she attacks faster. She will still have a three second attack speed. Dark Prince is getting a buff to his range by 20%. This is a very subtle change and makes his wacky stick weapon extend slightly further. This is actually similar to the miner's full reach as well now. Another buff to the Dark Prince is that they're increasing his splash radius so every time you see him swing onto enemies, you can see the impact of the circle. This radius is now 25% larger and will have immediate impact on how he counters swarm units dropped near him. An interesting thing to note about the mechanic of this is that when you place units on top of the Dark Prince, he attacks in the center, which effectively gives him a 360 splash radius. So this radius will significantly wreck Skarmy planted on top of him now. The bomber is getting a huge health boost of 28%. He will be able to tank an extra shot from a lot of units. Let's mention some significant interactions where he'll survive three shots now. He's going to survive three shots now from a knight, 
Musketeer, Miner, Electro Wizard, Bomb Tower, Electro Dragon, and the Tesla. One somewhat interesting change is that the Magic Archer will now take 5 shots to kill the Bomber. This actually buys the Bomber time to 2 shot the Magic Archer now. Despite being outranged, this Bomber now wins this interaction one on one. The Bomber will survive 4 total shots from a cannon now. I would love to see a Bomber behind a Giant or even a Golem in competitive play for the first time in Clash Royale history. All in all, the bomber's been buffed a lot of times in terms of range, damage, and now health. Maybe we'll see him in the meta. Let's test all of these new changes in a wacky 3 Musketeer deck. The bomber won't really synergize, but I really want to focus on the real-time interactions of how you deploy these units and how it's going to affect how you attack and how you defend. So now that we know that the three musketeer is gonna cost nine elixir down from 10, deploy time is now three seconds and each one is gonna stagger 0.15 seconds like the minion horde, like I said earlier. So it's like boom, boom, boom. They stand still like a golem and then they split. You got the princess, her projectile goes faster so her stats don't change. She's gonna nail it faster and miss less units that are just way too fast. The dark prince though, it's very subtle. Like I mentioned earlier, how the dark prince's range is being increased by 200. It's he's still classified as melee. His splash is gonna be bigger and all that good stuff. And then we have the bomber survives everything now. It's different he's different not only do you get a range buff earlier he's now got a health buff those are huge interactions that i mentioned earlier wall breakers they're gonna splash more things that's kind of cool you have the goblin barrel it's very subtle but it's different so let's test out this outrageous deck to see how it's gonna work in the live build again this is the dev build everything is subject to change but we'll try it out for what it is what kind of stats that we have right now maybe it's gonna be good all right so i'm facing myself i think uh princess projectiles faster let's put her in the back maybe i have a bait deck oh Okay, there's a battle round. Oh, slow it down, just enough. Ra battle round ain't got nothing on my bomber because my bomber's tankier now. Ice Golem's gonna tank for the Goblin Barrel. Goblin Barrel's gonna spawn a little bit faster. Not fast enough though, because the Barbarian Bell wrecks it. He I feel like the bomber did tank a bit more, but we're gonna have to put down the Dark Prince, absorb that charge, tank everything. It's gonna be enough to tank it, but it's not gonna be enough to really connect to the tower with it. oh man the baby dragon does connect to the tower all right well here's the thing you can't put down the defensive 3m anymore look at that load oh my goodness it doesn't work anymore 3m is different it's nine elixir but it's different it is stronger they kept the musketeer buff where it deals more damage or health. I forgot which one it was last month, but it's different. It's very different. I'm gonna put down the princess in the other lane. No hits. Hmm. Beauty. Let's go. Let's put down the dark prince a little bit there. And this deck doesn't make sense, so I'm destined to lose anyways. I've got wall breakers. Are they gonna kill him? Ooh, look at that radius. It's slightly different. It's juicy. Juicier. Let the ice spirit tank all that good stuff. Ice Golem's gonna stop most of them, but not quite enough, so I'm gonna put down the Princess. Oh my goodness, it still stops at this deck. This deck doesn't work, don't do it. Just because these are the cards that balance doesn't mean that they work together. Although, if you split three Musketeers in the back, he can't poison me. I mean, I can't poison me. So with that three seconds, I can build up a bit more Elixir. I'm gonna cycle to my Ice Golem so it's more threatening on that side. And I'm gonna put the Goblin Barrel a little bit there to bait out the Barbarian Barrel so it doesn't get value on everything. It's not really tricky tricky, but it's just enough. I have... Why is this meta P.E.K.K.A deck here? I actually have to use the Wall Breakers. Because those Musketeers, they're... That three second deploy, they're you can't... I don't know. Although, I do feel a lot more comfortable with this deck because 10 elixir, it was 10.5 elixir. At least it's a little bit more viable now. 10 elixir, 3M should never have happened. This deck's gonna make a lot more sense. It's classic, it works. The Dark Prince is buffed. If 3M is viable again, then this deck is gonna make a lot of sense, especially because there's, uh, dang it. I sense a, I sense a Royal Giant. This is our Royal Giant. Oh dear, I've gotta dodge those. So, I know this Royal Giant deck is gonna have lightning. Yep. Baited. How do I know these things? It's, it's a meta deck. Let's wait for it. One to destroy. Optimize the ice golem. Don't do three musketeers until double elixir. For the meantime, I'm gonna go that because you have guards in rotation already. Ah. I'm gonna zap it just so I can win that wizard interaction. And let's take that out there. 
And... Oh, he's going for the roll giant in the very back. Then I'm going to pump up. It's not double elixir. He's got lightning. I can't even do that. I can't even do that. I'm going to do it just to show you guys that you can't do it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That deploy time. It's nothing. The three seconds. That's so huge. Maybe 10. I would have spent. I would have been happier with spending 10.5 10 elixir on this. <laughs> 9M. I'm being dramatic here. It could work. Let's go for the elixir collector so I can bait out his lightning to take out my tower. Ugh. This is my life now. It's double elixir. Bum bum bum. Oh frick. One tile. Whatever. I know he wants the lightning that. I know he wants the lightning it. Oh dang it. He lightning it. Alright. I got the bandit still. I got the ice golem tanking, so I'm gonna go in for the miner. It's actually not bad. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go for offense defensive 3M. That's Yep. No. I mean the Dark Prince connects on that side. And here is where you don't No! So with this deck, that roll giant got way more hits than it should have because of the 3M deploy time. So you it's you can't use 3M defensively in the center anymore. Like it just doesn't work at all. And especially it messes up the timing, so I wasn't used to that where I would put the ice golem in and the ice golem would actually outpace the 3M while they're still loading. Because it got outpaced, they were no longer clumped together. The ice golem was no longer a lightning rod for that. So maybe I could have played better. I could have put the ice golem behind the 3M while they're deploying and then I could have put the Dark Prince way a little bit farther behind but that's kind of like tricky because you have to know their exact lightning rotation when they can do it and all that good stuff it gives them a lot more openings to lightning your 3M but I think this can work because you can bank up more stuff in the back so like I was talking about the interactions earlier in the video Tornado is going to be really good on this you don't have to react anymore it's going to be chaos Tornado will counter 3M you're going to get lane switch they're not going to split anymore I think it might actually be a better spot hope you guys know this video thanks for watching and stay tuned for more quality OJ.